Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art again. Um, I wanted to, I'm going to be reading more of our book, Poison Power by John Goffman, Arthur Tamplin. I do want to encourage you, thanks to Dee for reminding me that uh, probably every time I should remind my listeners to go to the NRC website and make public comments, frankly about everything that's available on the public comments site. Right now, uh, they up until uh, November 19th, we can make a comment about the hormesis no threshold. You know, the ANRC is thinking about going to the hormesis theory, which means basically they're going to tell us that radiation is good for us and that we don't have to worry about measuring it. And it's not so bad. A little bit of radiation is good for you. And in fact, what's the title of the chapter we're reading tonight? How Radiation Produces Disease and Hereditary Alterations. So we know for a fact, known scientific fact, real science, that it is not good for us, that hormesis is really bad for us. Uh, I was there earlier tonight. I made another video. But I also saw that there is something about the cast, which I just learned about on Friday from Donna Gilmore from the San Onofre Safety Dot org website, that's her website, sananofreesafety.org, that the cast that they store the waste in in the United States is only a half an inch thick, whereas in Europe they do it 18 inches thick. So, and theirs lasts for a very long time. Ours lasts for less than 100 years. They start cracking after 20 years. They're practically unsafe. We're just... There's there's absolutely no regard for at least the next three generations because these things will only last for two generations. And you can't even move them after 20 years because they start cracking. So people should comment on that, too, and tell the NRC, no, we want better casts. We want 18-inch thick casts like they have in Europe, period, and force them to delay it and get comments. And we, you can go to... Um, sananofreesafety.org, get information about those storage casts, look under nuclear waste, that's the drop-down menu where she has it, and uh, tell the NRC that that's what we want. I did see two other things there tonight that will probably pique people's interest, so make comments as much as you can. Uh, I see I'm at 234 right now, so I'm going to get into reading our book, okay? So we're on Chapter 3. How Radiation Produces Disease and Hereditary Alterations To grasp the significance of the physical harm done to human beings by radiation, it is not necessary to understand exactly what happens in body cells which are irradiated. But we will explain in several sentences what is known of these events in case you may need the information to debate on nuclear power plants. This terminology may be unfamiliar. The various kinds of radiation delivered to human cells, from beta rays, gamma rays, x-rays, or alpha particles, are commonly referred to as ionizing radiation, or radiation which separates or changes into ions. The name is appropriate because the speed electrons, beta rays, passing through living tissue actually rip negatively charged electrons from atoms, leaving positive charged ions. Such electrons, in turn, ionize other atoms until finally all the initial energy of the high-speed electron is dissipated. Such electrons originate in the nucleus of the unstable radioactive atom. When emitted, they travel with enormous speed, some having speeds approaching the speed of light. Many such electrons have gone through energy to break 100,000 chemical bonds between atoms. Wow. X-rays and gamma rays, by one or another mechanism, set electrons in motion in tissue. Once this is done, all the events which occur to, are similar to those produced by the original beta ray. Alpha particles also ionize atoms in their path, setting electrons in motion which cause further ionization. This disruptive action, producing electrically charged ions, is major, but not the only way such radiation injures tissues. 
Many chemical bonds between atoms are shattered in addition to the ionization produced. This is an, this is an important additional damage mechanism. For our purposes, such disruptive actions of ionizing radiation can be regarded simply as a massive, nonspecific disorganization or injury of biological cells and tissues. Biological cells are re remarkably organized accumulations of chemical sub substances. Wow, let me read that again. I apologize. Biological cells are remarkably organized accumulations of chemical substances arranged into myriad types of substructural entities within the cells. The beauty of such organization can only be marveled at the beauty of such organization can only be marveled at when revealed under the high magnification of such instruments such as the electron microscope or the electron scanning microscope. In stark contrast, there is hardly anything specific or orderly about the ripping chemical bonds or of electrons out of atoms. Perhaps this represents disorganization and disruption. Perhaps a reasonable analogy would be the effect of a jagged piece of shrapnel passing through tissues. One hardly expects nature's architect to be improved by the disruptive action of shrapnel or ionizing radiation. Instead, we can anticipate varying degrees of damage of the delicate internal cellular structure. So let me show you this picture. Let's see it. No, I can't see if you can read that because it's all blurry to me. So I'm going to read the what this says. I couldn't tell if you could read because from here to there it's all blurry. Ionizing radiation can cause reproductive health in human tissue cells. Above are two culture plates showing colonies of human tissue cells. Each was grown from an equal number of parent cells. The parent cells of the colonies on the right were exposed to ionizing radiation, while the parent cells of those on the left were not. So these ones were not exposed, and these ones were exposed. Wow, it practically killed everything. Courtesy of Theodore T. Puck, Scientific American, 1960. If the damage is catastrophic, the cell which has experienced the radiation injury dies. If less than that, the cell can go on living, though wounded, for a long time. Not only can wounded cells go on living, they can divide and reproduce new cells. Unfortunately, these new cells might carry the injury sustained by the irradiated cell from which they originate. Excuse me. In many body tissues, the loss of a certain number of cells due to radiation damage can be tolerated because remaining uninjured cells can divide and still maintain the necessary number of functioning tissue cells. Cells that are not injured too badly can carry on their usual function in the body, perhaps at less than optimum performance. Non-fatal injury to the cell of certain tissues may be far, far more dangerous to the person than the outright immediate death of the cell would be. These non-fatal injuries can be especially hazardous because within a period of years, a single cell injured in this way has the potential to initiate a cancer or a leukemia. Wow, that kind of hurts my feelings. We still do not know what kind of an injury ionizing radiation induces in the cells that would ultimately lead to a cancer. 5, 10, 15, or 20 years later. We do know for certain that this process does occur. What happens between the initial radiation injury and the ultimate appearance of a cancer or leukemia is still a mystery. 
But once this process has been initiated by radiation, science knows no way to stop it. A wide variety, possibly thousands, of types and degrees of injury to cells may occur from ionizing radiation. Perhaps only one of a few of these may be the kind which can start a cancer which finally destroys its human host. It is important to realize that one gram of cells, about 32 one 132nd of an ounce, from a human organ contains a billion cells, approximately. One thirty-second of an ounce has a billion cells, folks. Wow. I feel like I'm getting beat up learning about this. I swear to God. This is really, it's overwhelming. I'm going to have to go out into the forest and do a bit of camping, I guess. So even if it is only a very rare type of cell injury among thousands of possible injuries can start a cell on the path to cancer, it is still possible for thousands or hundreds of thousands of cells to be altered by radiation in a way that will eventually lead to a cancer. Do not forget, only one cell with the proper type of radiation-induced induced disorganization may develop into a fatal cancer. The process in between may be extremely complicated, and many injured cells might not be able to complete all the steps towards producing the production of a cancer, but it takes only one cell to do so. The period between radiation inju injury and obvious cancer is quite long in the human. Leukemia, often called blood cancer, takes at least four to five years. Other cancers take as long as 20 years. The intervening period is silent. The person doesn't realize it is going on. If asked about his health, he would say, of course I'm fine. Because of the silence during this unknown deadly, while this deadly unknown event is occurring, the time between irradiation and the appearance of cancer has been designated as the latency period. As for leukemia, the latency period is some five years. For thyroid cancer, it is approximately 13 years. For other cancers, the latency period is still not accurately, accurately known, although some periods of 20 years or more have been suggested. So 13 years, 2011, so that would be 2000. I mean, 2011, I guess that would be 2024, right, folks? That's when we're going to start seeing a lot of cancers in the thyroid. Wow. Once the latency period has passed, a certain type of cancer will continue to appear year after year in a group of humans subjected, subjected years before to known ionizing radiation. Acute leukemias due to irradiation continue to appear in apparently undiminished numbers consistently even 20 years after the Hiroshima-Nagasaki bombing. One form of leukemia, so-called chronic myelogenous leukemia, seems to appear among the exposed population steadily over a period of about 10 years and then to appear less frequently. For most cancers, we do not know whether they will continue to occur throughout life once the latency period is over. New cases may finally stop appearing 10 or 20 years in irradiated persons. Most public health officials properly assume that such cancers will continue to appear indefinitely in the irradiated groups. For the assumption of anything else can lead to grave misunder for grave underestimation of the hazard of radiation. Wow, that's where we're at exactly right now. We must realize that this major consequence of radiation injury to cells, namely cancer or leukemia production, does not become evident immediately after irradiation. Sadly, the long delay or latency period has proved to be very disarming. The result has been a failure to appreciate and understand the real magnitude of the pernicious effects of, radi of ionizing radiation. 
From radiation and other environmental noxious agents, we tend to expect immediate effects. If we don't see them, a false sense of security takes over. Actually, the NRC and the nuclear cartel, for them this is a win-win because they can just deny it. The nucleus is generally considered to be the crucial site of cell injury by ionizing radiation. Therefore, the critical structures injured with the nucleus are the chromosomes. In every normal human cell, except for certain stages of sperm and ova cells, there are 46 such chromosomes. These chromosomes are all considered by most biologists to carry all, or almost all, the information in the cell. Information which directs the cell in all its activities, including growth, cell division, production of a host of biologically important chemicals such as proteins, and other meta metabolic activities. For decades, we have known that ionizing radiation can produce microscopically visible injury to these delicate information-bearing chromosomes. Direct breakage of chromosomes into two or more pieces has been observed to occur after radiation of cells. There is every reason to believe that the chromosomes suffer much additional radiation injury that is not visible under the microscope. So we are at 16 minutes, folks, and I think I'm going to stop there. We have, we'll see how long this chapter is. This is going to be a really fun book. Who'd have thunk that we'd have going to have to get an education in frickin' nuclear because, because they're, gonna, they're willing to kill us. They've been killing us, and that we, we haven't even been told. Six million Americans right now are drinking uranium-tainted water. How many millions of New Yorkers are drinking tritium-tainted water? And how much other leakage is there that we know nothing about? And how many women have lost their babies in the first few months? How many women have had really damaged children that we don't even know about? They climb out of the hospital hurt and angry and feel like it's their fault. They blame themselves. And how many people have had children with learning disabilities and all kinds of things related to nuclear. This is such an outrage that we are just willing to let these monsters destroy our planet, our children, our children's future. They are going to they are putting nuclear waste in the United States in casts that are only a half an inch thick that last less than a hundred years. And they know that. And they are doing nothing. John Goffman wrote this book so that we would get off of our asses and we would get actually inspired and have information so we could actually do something about this. So I hope everybody listening to this, this reading and following my video blog will actually really, I, I appreciate the fact that you're watching this, but really I want you to take more action than this. We must make comments at the NRC. We must get actively engaged on these local commissions. We must get actively engaged with the city council. We must force our local government, our state government, to actually get engaged to protect us from the nuclear monsters who apparently have no problem killing all life on this planet for profit. Their number and only one thing they care about is money, period, money. Okay, you guys, I'll end here. Maybe tomorrow night I'll be in a better mood. I hope so, because I can't take it much longer. I'm going to do some tapping, I promise. So, ciao, you guys. Put your courage feet on. Let's do some tapping. Maybe I'll do a tapping video. Uh, take care, you guys. I really appreciate all of you. Ciao. Let's get active and push back. Let's create the tsunami to stop the nuclear cartel.